here to tell you about a wonderful sanctuary, the Intiwara Yasi Sanctuary in Bolivia, and the amazing people who started and run this sanctuary, Juan Carlos and Nina. Intiwara Yasi is a Bolivian non-profit organization whose aims are to protect the Bolivian environment and to run educational programs in environmental awareness. Amongst other activities, Intiwariyasi runs an animal sanctuary in southeastern Bolivia. In 1994, Juan Carlos Antizana took a group of street children on their first trip outside the slums of La Paz to experience the beautiful rainforests and wildlife of Bolivia. What they saw was farmers slash burning the forest and animals dying in the fires. So, with the natural empathy of vulnerable children, they asked Juan Carlos how they could help the animals. And so Intiwariyasi was founded. Intiwariyasi means sun, moon, stars. They started a small shelter in Juan Carlos's house in La Paz. But with the policy that no animal needing care would be turned away, they soon outgrew two properties in the city. So Intiwariyasi moved to the country. They were loaned a small piece of rainforest running alongside the river. The sanctuary takes in every kind of animal. Most have been severely abused, and nearly all were captured from the wild when very young, after their parents were killed. It offers them a chance of being rehabilitated from diseases or psychological trauma, and where possible, of being reintroduced into the wild. When the animals cannot be set free, the sanctuary functions as a lifetime home where they can live a good and dignified life. The animals are partly dependent on humans for their maintenance, but they live in their own habitat and enjoy the rainforest every day. The sanctuary is run by Bolivians, headed by Juan Carlos Santazana and Nena Balthazar Lugones. Juan Carlos is the president. He travels all over Bolivia, raising awareness of the plight of animals and the environment. He works with children, especially orphans, setting up action groups to rescue at-risk animals and educating people in how to protect their environment. Whenever he hears of animals in distress, be it in zoos, circuses or private homes, Juan Carlos campaigns for them to be released into the sanctuary. Nena is the deputy head of the organization and manages the main sanctuary in Villa Tunari. Nos herimos, nos maltratamos a nosotros mismos. The sanctuary heavily relies on volunteers who work mainly in the Villa Tunari side. They stay a minimum of two weeks and pay their own expenses. If they want to work with the cat or the spider monkeys, it is necessary to stay longer. The animals really benefit from volunteers spending longer periods of time with them. The volunteers work very hard to make sure the animals are exercised, well fed and properly housed. The sanctuary relies almost completely on money donated from drop-in volunteers, so with their help and despite lack of consistent funding, the animals are happy and healthy. Intiwariyasi has survived largely due to strong determination and resilience. Involving children at every level in educating people about the environment. Intiwariyasi has rapidly grown into the unique role as Bolivia's only sanctuary for rescued animals. Illegal trade in wildlife is rampant across Bolivia. There are strong markets in household pets and traditional witchcraft. In La Paz and other cities, Juan Carlos regularly inspects witchcraft shops. 
These shops sell a variety of creatures to cure ailments ranging from lack of luck in love to lung cancer. There are fetuses of llamas, dried frogs, furs of pumas and ocelots, and wings of birds including the condor, the national bird of Bolivia. Juan Carlos does the best he can in deterring the people who sell them and the people that buy. Se me van a ir a la cárcel. Sabes que la ley dice dos años de cárcel, ¿verdad? La última vez, señora, ¿ya? Tenemos cueros de, de gato montés y de un puma. Entonces, esto está prohibido por la ley. Estoy esperando que, que aparezca la dueña para, para, para reclamar esta situación porque no es, no es legal. Although in name there is a law making it illegal to do this, there is no enforcement body so it carries on unchecked. Many of the animals in the sanctuary have come from zoos. Este pobre jaguar está, está queriendo salir de aquí. El frío lo tiene sometido. Está gritando de, de frío, caminando sin saber qué hacer. Es lastimosa la, la vida de de estos animales aquí en, en esta prisión que se llama Zoológico de Oruro. La vida de Sama comparando con esta, la vida de Yaguarú comparando con esta. Analicen ustedes. Bolivia is a poor country and sadly the zoos here are very neglected. The cages are small and concrete and the quality of life for the animals is very poor. One of the first animals to come to the sanctuary was a puma, who is now called Gatto, because of his mellow nature. Gatto was found in a circus that was touring Bolivia. At first they were surprised when he didn't move round his cage, until they realised he couldn't walk. His owners, who were frightened of him and beat him regularly, had broken his back legs so that he couldn't attack them. I do the strategy because I never worked with dogs. One time in the zoological, the dogs were very small. And I was afraid. But that day I took the courage and went and got the dogs. The dogs were very big. They 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 were very big. Que estaba, pero el puma parecía que no quería irse porque ahora estaba arrastrando. Y, y cuando yo me fijo bien, el puma había tenido las, las patas mal. Entonces yo agarro al puma y, y, y ya no importaba que la arañe o lo que sea, pero yo, yo me vence el amor y lo agarro y lo alzo. Cuando he arrived at the sanctuary, he was very weak. The Canadian volunteer, who had initially planned to stay for two weeks, instead stayed for nine months, walking Gatto every day until he could walk properly. Now he walks from nine in the morning until five in the afternoon. 
He has his own territory, which he continually marks, exploring, rolling around and playing in his favourite places. has a nap for a couple of hours at lunchtime before continuing his walk. Pumas are creatures of habit. Gatow has certain logs he likes to use as rubbing posts, a waterfall he loves to explore, or sometimes he goes for a swim at the beach. Willow is a weasel who the sanctuary is planning to put back into the wild shortly. Until recently, Willow has been living in a large cage and left on a long cord to roam around a large gardened area. This has now been developed into a four-hour walk each day. Willow has become a different weasel. She has come on in leaps and bounds, literally. Her excitement and enthusiasm is infectious. She is a very gutsy animal, never afraid to explore every nook and cranny. Her confidence has greatly increased, as has her fitness. To begin with, she could only manage 20 minutes. Now she's still running four hours later. These days, all she wants is a hole of her own. Negro is the leader of the group of spider monkeys at Villa